All right. Hello. It's morning for me, so I don't know when, but I don't know when you're going to watch this. Um, so greetings, Chem 1141 students. I'm Dr. Gray. I wanted to give you a little bit of a preview for the experiment that you're going to be doing soon. That is experiment number four, which I'm flipping through my lab notebook. Experiment number four, copper, a long and twisted tail. Okay, so for this experiment, we're looking at a couple of different things, and we're going to be um, more or less working with a copper solution and kind of doing some different things with that copper solution. If you look on the very first page of your experiment, page 53, at the bottom of the page, you're asked for an example of a single displacement reaction, single, or a double displacement reaction. Now, you're asked specifically for an actual example rather than a model. What I'm going to provide you all with is a model of a single displacement reaction and a double displacement reaction. So a single displacement reaction follows a model of AX plus B yields BX plus A. So essentially what you have there is you have a compound that reacts with an atom or a, yeah, an atom. And then you produce a new compound and isolate that one atom. So what you've got here is basically A and B switching spots. So it, you can probably find one of these through a Google image search or something like that, but make sure that it follows the same model. Now, a double displacement reaction. Again, you can probably Google this to find a good example of one, but a model for a double displacement reaction would be something that I like to follow of AX plus BY yields BY plus AX. Again, all that's happened is A and B have switched spots. So A was previously in a compound with X. The product, or I made a mistake. I apologize for that. Let me erase this because I just rewrote the exact same thing. I don't know if I said the same thing, but um, I've got AY plus BX. There we go. Now, the, the sequence that I wrote them in, AY plus BX, you could just as easily write it as BX plus AY. Um, but essentially what you have is A, which was previously in a compound with X, now is in a compound with Y. And B, which was previously in a compound with Y, is now in a compound with X. So those are your uh, single displacement and double displacement reactions. This is one thing, specifically a double displacement reaction, is what you're going to be investigating today. Now, on page number 54 of your experiment, you're asked to define the following. Oxidation and reduction. Now, we're talking about these two concepts in the, the context of an atom, basically an atom going to an ion. What's happening there? You've already been exposed to or talked about in your 1341 class, you've talked about subatomic particles. So you've talked about protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons have a positive charge, neutrons have no charge, which I'm just going to indicate with an N, and then electrons have a negative charge. All of these different subatomic particles assemble to make an atom. And well, oxidation and reduction are processes by which an atom loses an electron to form an ion or an atom gains an electron to form an ion. Now, you could have an ion lose an electron and basically uh, have more of a negatively charged ion, or you could have an ion gain an electron. It's all, uh, it's all kind of a relative term. What you need to focus on is oxidation is loss, or O-I-L. Oxidation is loss of electrons, and reduction is gain of electrons, rig. Maybe you've talked about oil rig as a good mnemonic for understanding oxidation and reduction. Okay, so for this experiment, I'm going to go ahead and flip over to page number 58 of your procedure. Um, 58 of your procedure, you're presented with a total of four different trials. Trials one and two are mixing copper sulfate 
and CuSO4 and NaOH, mixing these two things and producing something new. Now, what you're doing here though, is you're using 50 milliliters of copper sulfate and 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide for trial number one. Trial number two, on the other hand, you're mixing uh, 25 mils of copper sulfate, again, CuSO4, 50 mils, 25 mils, and then 25 mils and 50 mils of NaOH. So if you look at this, this provides a good example of an AX plus BY. So you have this ionic compound, copper sulfate, which copper is going to be the A, and then the SO4 sulfate ion is the X, Na is B, and OH, the hydroxide ion, is the Y. So you can shuffle those around and come up with your products. You do have to make sure that you balance this chemical reaction and balance the uh, um, charges within them. Because if you remember, copper forms a two plus ion because, and sulfate is a, a two minus ion. But at any rate, trials one and two, that's what you're going to do. What I'd like you to, and this is kind of a jumping forth and backwards, but for trials number one and two, you're going to produce a product and then you're going to try to recover those. Recover by filtration. Now, this recovery by filtration, you're going to incubate that or you're going to basically let it filter for 30 minutes so that it gets very, very dry. Okay, so this is part two. So part one has all the four trials listed out. What I want you to do, and I think an efficient and uh, yeah, an efficient use of your time is to do trials one, trial two, then jump to part two where you bit again the recovery of the products formed in part one. Okay, you're going to recover that product. You're going to determine the mass of it. All of what you need to figure out is on pages um, or page 64 of your procedure page 64 of your lab manual, I'm sorry. Then we'll go back to part one, where you have trials three and trials four. Now trials three and trial four, you have again, copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide and CuSO4 plus NaOH. You're going to have those two substances mix with one another, but then What's a little bit different is you're going to take these two products in glass beakers because you want to always, you're going to be heating these substances and you're going to put these on a hot plate. And you're going to see what happens. Now, in trial number four, there's one other thing that you're going to be adding, and that is glucose. Glucose, which has a formula of C6. H12O6. You're going to mix these, all of these things together, put them on a hot plate, and you're going to observe some differences that take place. And well, you're going to form different compounds. After putting this on a hot plate, you're going to form something known as copper oxide. And on And then in this other instance, when we have glucose, well, the interesting thing is the mixture of copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide gives you copper hydroxide with that two subscript. So you have one Cu2 plus ion for each hydroxide ion. But then whenever you add glucose to this mixture and then heat it up, you're gonna form this. Now, that's different. What this is going to show is, so here I'm gonna circle all this because that's basically what you're forming. And then over here, you're forming copper hydroxide, but with a plus one charge compared to a plus two charge. 
So what happens there? Well, to go from plus two to plus one, what's going to have to be added? You're adding one electron. So what does that effectively mean? That means that this copper in the presence of glucose and heat, well, are you oxidizing it or reducing it? And what I want you to observe in lab is, well, how does this compound change? How does the substance change based on the presence of these other things? And kind of think about, well, what is the, if, if one thing is being oxidized, then something else has to be reduced. This electron right here has to come from somewhere. Who could be the culprit? So you're comparing trials three and trial four. What's the difference? What could cause this oxidation or reduction to take place? I'll give you a hint. It's the one variable that is only present in one of them. Um, then you're gonna try to recover those compounds, determine the mass of them. You're gonna dry them for, or you're going to filter them for about 10 minutes only. Um, the filter that we're going to be used is maybe not, um, or sorry, the compounds that you produce in trials number three and number four, they are very, very fine. So they might get through the filter paper. Um, don't try to refilter it or anything like that because it will just take a lot of time. So do your filtration, try to save some of it, see how much you, you actually recover there. All right, everybody. I hope that you enjoy this lab and I hope that you have a great day. Bye.